Hey everybody, Carl Schilling here, and uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, we've got a lot to cover, and I wanted to let you know that most importantly, I wanted to put our trainings uh, on video, okay, because uh, I've tried to have the mastermind meetings, I'm sure we'll get there at some point, I wanted to get people, but it's hard, you know, you, you everyone who's in this network is busy, and I understand that. You're out there every day trying to uh, make a living, work hard, help other people, and that's what it's supposed to be about. So I want to help you because you've made the commitment to be part of our special network and you want to um, double, triple, quadruple, e e 10 times your production. I know, I know how much you want to be successful. So uh, it's important to me to get you trained on this financial concierge kind of concept and to make sure that you understand what we're talking about when, we, when we're presenting ourselves as a financial concierge. So I think the best way to do that, obviously a lot of repetition and a lot of discussion, but I think if we get the story right in our minds, then we have that story, we have a message, and that message is what makes us a financial concierge. That message is what differentiates us, separates us from all the white noise, makes us way different than anybody else people could work with, okay? And that's what it's all about. So uh, today, what I'm going to do, this is an interactive video, and it's, it's a tool that you should be using as well, and I'll get you all set up on Enfuse if you're interested, you call me. But here's the deal. On your right-hand side, you're going to see a white paper, some things we talked about today, or maybe a PowerPoint, okay? You'll see that on your right-hand side. On your left-hand side, there's an email button. You can email me directly, and of course, as always, there'll be a soft phone. And after watching the video or whatever is happening, you can call me direct from that soft phone. That's a live connect. You won't dial my number. You'll dial your number. Dial your number plus the area code, area code in your number, and it will, it will connect to you. And when you pick up your phone, you will have me on the other side, okay? So let's dive right in today. Uh, let's take a peek at what we want to talk about and the things that we want to uh, get done in the beginning of this training, okay? So financial transformation is a uh, 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 a course that I did last February, if you remember, and now I'm, I'm now getting it up at Teachable. It's going to be something you can sell, you can make commissions on as affiliate with me, but also it's a kind of a, um, a foundational piece, as it were. You don't have to get involved in it, but I think it'll really help if you get clients involved in it because you won't have to repeat a lot of stuff. I will have already done it for you. And inside of that course, we really, really highlight the financial concierge and how important they are. So we just keep reinforcing you in that, okay? But as a financial concierge, it's all about financial literacy education. So let's look at our message, okay? Our message is kind of brief in the beginning when you're speaking with people. You know, did you know that we live in the um, wealthiest, richest nation in the world? Some would say the richest nation in the history of civilization. Now, that's debatable. But we certainly are the richest nation in the world at this point. And also, at the same time, while we're the richest nation in the world, did you know we have the highest rate of financial illiteracy in the world? It makes sense because we are the richest nation. It does make sense that we have more people financially illiterate, I gather, because we've got more people who are uh, at certain levels of wealth. But because of that financial illiteracy, people are simply unaware, and we have a dilemma, and we've had that dilemma for well over 100 years. That dilemma is that of all the people reaching age 65 in our great society or older, when they get to that fourth quarter of life, 95% of them are dead, dead broke, or at best financially dependent. That means financial dependence means that they are directly dependent upon family, friends, um, social networks, organizations, institutions, the church, at worst, the government. And that's who they're dependent upon. Only 5% reach financial independence at any point in their lifetime. Now, you don't have to be 65 in the fourth quarter of life or 70 to reach financial independence. You can be financially independent at 30, 35, you know, in the, in the second, third quarters of life, right? But the bottom line is you're never going to be financially independent if you don't know how to become financially independent. And as a financial concierge, that's what I do. I help people become financially independent. Are you interested? So when we talk about that, we have a lot of ways to do things. And again, we're not talking here. This was just one little general operation. We talked about workshops, okay? But 
Again, what we want to do is get the message out to as many people as possible. That's why we have the unique uh, virtual platform. You know, in the past, you might have gone to uh, a library and set it up so that you had little workshops locally in the community. You go to realtors and, and set up workshops for them to show them how that you would come in and do financial literacy and it would increase their farming area and would increase their ability to um, uh, have uh, uh, more uh, clients around them, okay? Uh, but we can also do this virtually in our 3D total virtual platform where we can have literally thousands of people in there, okay, at the same time. Now, what we want to do in, in, that, in that process, though, okay, is this. This is one tool that you can take on, but I want to just talk from the beginning message, and the beginning message is about financial literacy as a starting point. Because before people can honestly reach out and move towards financial uh, independence, they have to become aware of what money is all about and how mon their own biases affect them and their own beliefs about money affect them, what their credit records are doing to them, all these areas, okay, all these distinct areas where we have solutions and answers, we want to uncover that. So piece by piece, you get to the point where you're going to cross sell a life insurance case. You're not going to lead in with it. You're going to be able to cross sell powerfully. Okay, now whether you're going to work in any of the verticals we talk about, and we have another training class on verticals, and right now we're not going to talk about that, but those are markets to work in. I want you to realize that it's about right now, the idea of being a financial concierge is twofold. It's mostly about relationship building because with a virtual world, you can build those relationships anywhere across the country or even outside the country, in Canada and other places, okay, Mexico. But at the same time, we also want to have community branding because if you're a financial concierge, you know, you're going to have people right in front of you every single day. So the people you touch base with and rub elbows with and those people who are in your 250, chances are inside your 250, because everybody knows 250 people, chances are a lot of them are in your community or around you. Yeah, there's plenty that you forgot about in your life because chances are, you're going to be successful in this business. You have more than 250 people. You just haven't thought about it yet. You could have a thousand. Okay. You could have 5,000, but the point is that you need to constantly be reflective of that, get it down. And that's another lesson in and of itself on how to build the referral base. Okay. But we want people to become aware. We want them to realize how financial literacy fits into that first stage. And then we want people working towards financial independence. And by the way, in helping people become financially independent, you become financially independent. And it's okay for them to know that. I think they should know that. I think they realize that you have a partnership, okay? So really, a financial concierge is a personal financial advocate. That's what you are. You're an advocate. And as an advocate, I, I'm only concerned about your best interest. That's what an advocate does. I'm advocating for you, for your loved ones, for the family, for the people who won't speak up. Your children can't talk to you about different things in finances, but you want to take care of them. Somebody needs to advocate for them, and that's us. That's what a financial concierge does. We're an advocate. That's why a discussion about life insurance is so po powerful when you come at it from an advocate perspective. When you discuss life insurance as an advocate, you're not discussing it as a salesperson. You're not discussing it as a product peddler. You're discussing it as, hey, you know, you know, John, one of the things, this is a very difficult conversation we're about to have, and most people don't want to have it. So I want to speak to you knowing that this is a tough conversation. I want to speak to you from an advocate perspective. So I'm having this conversation with you for the benefit of your family, of your children, of your loved ones, of the future that they are going to enjoy and want to have based on your ability to financially provide for them. And in case you're not here to financially provide for them, at least we can have money that's still there to financially provide for them. And that's what this discussion is all about. And that's the purpose of life insurance. Now there's many other wonderful living benefits, but really what we want to discuss first is the fact that we are advocating for your family, loved ones, and for possibly your business partners, Whatever that may be, we want you to make sure that the financial protection and the financial future is locked in. And that's where we come in, okay? So basically, our role as an advocate is to provide 
education. Then we provide guidance within that education. And then we provide service during and after the fact. And that's the point of being a financial concierge. Now, the team effort part of what we talk about is we want to build a community of like-minded people. And they're all committed to attaining financial independence. Now, when we create this community, referrals will come from it. Um, many, many blessings come from it because we're, all, we're sharing a very simple message. As a financial concierge, we're only sharing a simple message of financial independence. Everything we do, everything we discuss, everything we bring to the table has one goal in mind, and that's to help a person become financially independent. That's why we've got the white papers when we talk about the, the message, okay? The three golden rules of financial independence. Education, help people understand these three golden rules. You should know them inside out. It's part of our training and development. The other thing is the three stages of you. Help people understand that, that past you, present you, and future you as it pertains to the three dimensions of money, not the rest of their life, the rest of their life is the rest of their life. Somebody else is taking care of that. Just money. Help them understand that when they borrow today, they're truly borrowing from future you, the future of themselves, of the unearned income that they have yet to earn. They have borrowed that money and moved it forward. It's money they won't have back up then in the future. It's money they brought forward. They didn't borrow from the bank. They didn't borrow it from the lenders. Yeah, they, they laid it out, but that's not who they borrowed from. They borrowed from themselves. Help people start to understand this. When they get that concept down and they get that message, we're building a community of like-minded people, share that message with other people. That message will catch on. That message can become uh, really a hot fire, fiery message when people start to understand, wow, I never thought about the fact that when I borrow money, I'm actually diminishing money from my future self and I'm paying interest on it today. And the longer I pay interest, the less money my future self will have because I've already pre-spent the money I have not yet earned. And then if I know the three levels and the three secrets of golden rules, I know that I need three types of income. And if I know I need three types of income, I know how to take care of future you. These are all things we build into our message, okay? So I wanted uh, everybody today, <clears throat> Um, to see, you know, what it is we're trying to accomplish here and, and make sure you understand that these are the parameters of being a financial uh, concierge. Now, uh, I'm going to do a lot of these little videos, these training videos, try to keep them to 15, 20, 30 minutes. You know, I know it's, uh, I don't want to be lecturing at you. That's why I want to hold the mastermind group so we can share. But there's a lot, there's a lot. And, and I've got 40 plus years experience in a lot of areas and I want to give it all to you. I want to give it all out to every agent who we work with. And, and those agents can be, you know, brand new, you know, sparkling uh, novices who just are excited, just got a license. We can certainly work with them. You could be in the business three to five years and, and, and you've made it so far, but you're still struggling and that's a tough thing. We can definitely help you. You could be a 20, 30 year veteran. I worked with a 40 year veteran just a couple of weeks ago, mentioned something to a 40 year veteran told him a, a, a little concept, which I'll close with today to give to you so you all have it. And he never heard it. And he was amazed, okay? Uh, every agent I've ever given this last little tidbit to has uh, at least doubled their, uh, their production on it. But, but here's, it's a simple kind of concept. Um, when you close, and uh, you, you know, everybody talks about closing, but closing should just be a nice transference into making a decision. It's not a tactic, it's not a, it's a, it's a relationship, it's a whole movement, okay? So, you know, you transition in a relationship, you, you transition from moment to moment, you don't like, oh, okay, this is the open, this is the middle, and this is the close, so now I gotta do this. Uh, that's where we get backed up, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship, it goes smooth, so you get to closing, and when you speak to people and you propose what you propose, always propose the annual premium. Hey, Bob, it's been a pleasure. I think that uh, we've come to these conclusions. Now, you do believe that uh, this is very important, correct? And you do uh, find that this is going to answer and solve the problems we've discussed, correct? And so, Bob, uh, in order for us to get that started and put this in place, I just need a check for $3,000.
$5,000, $8,000, whatever it is. Just ask. Don't even blink. Just ask. Now, of course, there'll be some sticker shock. Well, there should be. And, uh, but what'll happen is when that sticker shock goes away, um, the only objection at that point you're probably going to hear is that I can't pay. Ooh, I didn't know. I can't pay that much. So, okay. Well, you know, Bob, when I, when I consider it, um, people pay their bills monthly. I know a lot of people are comfortable with all of that. So we do have a monthly program that you have to have a, you know, automatic, uh, withdrawal from your checking account. No big deal, but that's going to be 300 a month, 400 a month, 500, you know, whatever that number is. Okay. Now, if you do that, you've set it up. So you're not arguing about um, whether they're getting this or not anymore. You're done. You're done. It's over, you know, um, because the sticker shock from the big number to the small number is now very palatable. So people, they're no longer worried about three, four, 500 a month. But if you open only with three, four, 500 a month, that's when you start to get the objection because the sticker shock is on the three or four or 500 a month. The sticker shock is not on the big number. So always use the big number and come down to that nice monthly and you will find yourself closing way more cases and having way less debates about objections when the sticker shock goes away. Now, the other good part of that is on occasion, you're going to run into a, an annual premium just by accident. You're going to run into an annual premium where somebody doesn't have sticker shock. Somebody definitely says, oh, you know, fine, uh, I'm going to stroke that check. So, uh, again, that's just one little thing um, as we do. As you know, uh, my goal is to work with as many agents as we can get into the organization, be as uh, open as I can, as transparent as I can. I can help you change the direction of your career. I, I definitely have done that in the past. I've worked with well over a thousand agents in my career now. I've been a successful coach in sports. I've been a successful business coach and I've been successful working with agents. Okay. Um, but I've done it. I've been in the field. I'm not telling you to do things I have not done. And I'm not telling you about experiences that never happened. And I'm not trying to get you to experiment. I'm trying to show you a positioning that allows you to get beyond all the psychology of, uh, of manipulation and all the psychology of the, mass uh, difficulties in the marketplace. Look, there's over a million insurance agents, 1.1, 1.2 million in, in the industry. Now that counts uh, all, all uh, lines, but here's the problem. There's millions of people out there spreading millions of misinformation. They are out there every day. Look, there's good agents and there's bad agents. There are manipulative agents. There are agents who intentionally lie, cheat, and steal. And there's agents who just misinform people because they're misinformed. And then there are agents trying to do the right thing, okay? We want an organization and a team of agents who are trying to do the right thing. That's it. I mean, it's not that hard. But we also want you to recognize that you don't want to be a generalist. Of the 1.1, 1.2 million agents in this industry, I assure you more than 75 to 80% are, are generalists. <clears throat> They're out there selling anything, throw anything off the wall, whatever it is, what's the newest, best thing. I'm in, I'm out, you know, people calling me, oh, this is the greatest thing next to sliced bread. You know, you should push this, you should push that, you should push this. Forget it. Forget it. That's a generalist. Generalists make the least amount of money of anybody in this industry, okay? Why? Because they are not involved in a relationship. They're, they're pitching and peddling a product. That's all they're doing. And they're listening to the old school thought of you got to go out and create the need. You can't create a need psychologically. Let me tell you right now, people need something or they don't. But the need is always going to come from the individual. If I need something in life, you're not going to come in and tell me what it is I need and force me to agree that I need it. That ain't going to work. Never works. I know what I need or I'm unaware of what I need. And you educated me on something that, oh, I could see that I need it. But you didn't create the need, nor do you ever create the need. So you don't want to be a generalist. You want to be the next level is specialist. As a specialist, your market's defined. You know who you work with. You know what problems you solve. You know how to best solve those problems as a specialist. Specialists make two to two and a half times what generalists make. That's it.
So you want to be a specialist. After specialist, you want to, uh, you want to uh, gain enough knowledge and you want to gain enough experience and you want to gain enough comfort in, in building relationships that you want to become an authority. Now, when you're an authority, you're going to make two, three times what a specialist makes because you're an authority. And chances are, as an authority, you're going to be creating other specialists yourself. You're going to be creating other people. You don't want to ever, ever create any generalists. You don't want any generalists in your organization. If they come to you and say, they, this is what they do, and this is how they do it, and this is what they want to do, let them go. Let them go. If they don't understand the difference between a generalist and a specialist, let them go. Don't even bother. Trust me, it's coming from experience. I've learned this the hard way, very hard. I've been out there trying to help people for decades now, and I'm always willing to work with anybody, but trust me, every time I've come across a generalist, it does not work. I still have some generalists in our organization right now. And, and again, you know, I, I'm not trying to uh, send them packing, but if they won't listen, they won't listen. Okay. If you get them on the way in and they're, they're generalists and they're married to it, don't bother. Don't even go through the whole uh, situation. So we want to move our people from specialist to authority. Now the last ceiling to this whole thing is celebrity. Eh, very few people reach that level of celebrity, but you know, you'll see it, you know, celebrities are uh, people who you hear about all the time. You know, the Kevin, um, uh, the Kevin Harrington's of the world, uh, the Grant Cardone's of the world, you know, Anthony Robbins, Th these people become celebrities. They've moved out of the status of authority to a celebrity in the insurance industry. You'll hear some names occasionally. Those guys became celebrities. Okay. And that's nice. That's nice. Some of those celebrities are very helpful people. Some of them are really compassionately concerned. Many times people who reach the level of celebrity, the only one they're concerned about is them. And, you know, and, and so be it. Um, but as an organization, we want to build a team. Okay. So it's about the message. So the beginning of that message is kind of simple. Uh, hey, Carl, what do you do? Well, you know, I help people reach financial independence, attain financial independence. Are you interested? Um, it's kind of broad topic, Carl. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't know if there's things that you're aware of or unaware of, but you know, we live in the richest nation in the world and, and we also have the highest level of financial illiteracy. And this has led to the fact that only 5% of our society ever reached financial independence. And I find it kind of amazing that in a country like us, only 5% reaching financial independence is pretty pitiful. Would you agree? Uh, how do you feel about where you are today in financial independence? And then you kind of just boil down, okay? But you got to remember all our tools. You can use FES, you can use finance agents, you know, the little link. You can, uh, obviously, well, everything is to cross-sell insurance. Uh, but we're going to start talking more and more about the specialist side and how to get you in a vertical. But you've got to get the message first before anything else. So read, I'll put it up here when we have it on the video. Read the three golden rules for financial independence. Ingrain it in your, in your heart and soul. Understand it. Be able to converse on it. It's not difficult. It's a simple message. Read the three stages of you. Understand money in 3D. Understand that concept, okay? Um, I'll get the middle class millionaire plan out to you. You can read that. But the middle class millionaire plan con condensed a lot of this as well, okay? So we, we have a lot of verticals. And we have a lot of areas that you can specialize in. But I want you to specialize. And I want you to then build organizations where you teach others to specialize. And some of the people you're going to be working with are going to be people who started out as a client. They didn't start out as an insurance agent. They started out as a client. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So, again, I hope for a first uh, kickoff little message, this was good for you. I hope that uh, you keep looking it over and I hope there's some good information here. Look for the uh, information we leave up here in the buttons. You can download it right away. And then also uh, anything you need from me, again, we tell you all the content uh, that you want to put in social media, the things we want to talk about uh, as well there. So I'll speak to you again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to video some more. We'll probably end up having about 50, 60 training videos and uh, you can go back on them anytime you need them, okay? So uh, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it today as usual. If you need me, call me. Uh, whatever it is at any time that you think you need something, please let me know. Let me know. We have so much that we can provide for you. It's, it's hard to just put it all in a box. 
okay? So when you're out there and you speak to different people and you find different angles, call me because sometimes I got an angle that you don't have yet. And sometimes I can help you with that deal or help you see a part that you don't see yet, a part that's there, okay? And by, by the way, I'm not perfect and I don't know all the angles. So I am constantly learning and looking. So I'm always doing my own geometry lessons, okay? Uh, anyway, have a great day. Thanks again, and uh, let's speak soon.